When the cat's away, the mice will play. Hey guys, Nolan here. Today, we're talking about how to run a horse business again. Yup, you heard right. This time, how to manage people running it instead of letting the people run you. So in a previous video, we spoke about what the barn owner is expected to do and check off their list when they're going to run a horse business. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, the link is right up there and I'll link it down below in the description just for you guys. In one of the comments, I was asked if I could do a video on how to deal with needy boarders who get to the point of micromanaging to the point of causing drama in the barn. So if you have a boarder or two, or hell, maybe a whole bunch, because they do like to flock together, who like to micromanage a barn and cause lots of drama, now this video might just be just what you're looking for. So a little cruiser told me that they have a couple of needy boarders in the barn and they kind of popped up out of nowhere. It gets really bad when the owner is off-site or goes on vacation. How are they expected to deal with it? So first thing I'm going to tell you, this is an abnormal. And that's not to say it's A-OK -okay and get used to it, but I'm just saying you know that it happens a lot of places. Especially during the COVID-19 thing, it got really bad. From the top training facilities to the boarding bar to the back 40, yep, it's all in there. I don't know if that makes any of you feel better or not, but I'm just telling you, you're not alone. So that's good, right? So there are usually three reasons why the boarders become needy. There's the, it's not their fault. There's the, it's kind of their fault. And then there's the, yeah, damn right, it's their damn fault. Okay, so the first possibility is, it's not their fault they're this way. This comes from the staff management. If the boarders feel like the whole spectrum of the barn changes when the manager goes away, they are going to feel the need to micromanage. Say horses aren't being brought in at the right time. Say horses aren't being fed the same quantities. The boarders are going to be on it like 10 men. Boarders love consistency, and a lot of the time their micromanagement comes from an anxiety that the needs of their horse aren't being met the same way as when the manager is there. Another example of this is when a boarder asks for only a specific staff member to turn their horses in and out. Yeah, guess what? I've been that boarder. Yeah, I'm an asshole, but guess what? I can assure you I've been called a lot worse. But when the staff walks a horse poorly, it affects the horse and the rides that follow. I shouldn't have to deal with repercussions because a handful of staff members can't walk a horse, nor should the horse have to deal with the consequences. Bloody hell, the horse is dragging me right around. Where are we going? Where are we going? Okay, Nolan, I get that. That's great. I've got all that in the bag, though. The border's still being a jerk. This then leads us into gray area, where both the borders and the staff are kind of contributing to the problem. Nobody's really clean, but nobody's really being nasty either. The problems just kind of happen, and that triggers the border's micromanagement. You're enabling them. It's not that you're trying to do anything bad. It's just... It kind of just happens. Actually, you're probably trying to do something really good, but it kind of backfires. But it kind of enables them to push to get what they want. So best thing to do is do the test. When did the border start becoming needy? Did you offer it to one border and then all of a sudden all the other borders wanted the same thing? Borders are kind of like toddlers. I mean, okay, maybe not exactly like it. They're not screaming and having temper tantrums. Actually, kind of like scrap that. They very well could. But what I mean is when somebody gets something, they kind of want it too. Take it this way, if the toddler's playing with a doll and everything's all fun and dandy, but the moment you go play with the ball, they want the ball too. The same thing kind of goes for boarders. Even if they don't need it, they want it. They want to be treated like equals. Another thing is if you offer something once, it's now become an expectation. Say you offer to put a back on track blanket on a horse when they come in and then take it off after an hour or so for no charge. The boarder is going to expect that you do it all the time. You offered it, now they expect it. But it's fine when the manager is here, Nolan. It's when they leave that's the problem. Are the rules still in place when the manager is gone as when they are there? If the boarder learns that there is a list of rules when the manager is there and it goes out the window when they're gone, the boarders are going to wait it out and manipulate the situation when the time presents itself, AKA when the manager's off property. And that brings us to the final situation where the border is just an needy jerk and that's just who they are. And they usually use that to their advantage to get what they want. They want more shavings in their stalls. The manager's away, so I'll just get it myself. Entitlement in full force. The best part is when you confront them about it. They'll give you all the excuses about how you're doing it wrong and they need to step in. Playing the victim. These needy borders will make things personal, maybe. They just don't like you. They want to break the rules and they are really pissed off with you because you want to keep them in place. Maybe you're just cramping their style. Sadly, I have heard that before too, so. So, what do you do? You need to bring this up to the one in charge. Easy as that. And this is going to do one of two things. It's going to fix your problem and eliminate the nonsense. If the head honcho says enough is enough, one more time and you're out of here, it should mean something. Or, it's going to do absolutely nothing at all because, and I went through this very recently, the manager's almost in on it. 
The manager isn't nasty in themselves, but something in their brain can't allow them to do their job. I know, it sounds crazy, but it happens. When the needy boarder does something not cool and the manager attempts to deal with it, the needy boarder manipulates them and pushes back, and the manager recoils. Like, you know, a turtle on its back. And the manager apologizes and tells the boarder they're going to deal with the staff, and it's a back and forth game of nonsense. Constantly undermining the staff, leaving the staff powerless when the manager takes their days off. The fun part is when the manager comes bitching at you about how much the border is a nuisance, yet keeps nodding their head and cowtailing to them. As I said, I've dealt with this, and I dealt with it for years. I got to the point where I realized I couldn't help the manager, so I decided to walk away and leave them, because I realized there's no helping them. But let's say your manager's not in on it. So now what do you do? The first thing to understand is no matter what, there's always going to be at least one border that drives you nuts. There's no getting rid of it. Even if you decide to kick them out, somebody else will inevitably fill that spot. It could be a new boarder. Hell, it could even end up being a fellow boarder you really enjoyed being around. Sometimes they become needy because they saw the attention the former needy boarder got. Or sometimes they don't even do it intentionally. And sometimes they've always been like that, but we used to have a blind spot for them. Regardless, it never really goes away. So unless they're really causing a lot of drama, making people's lives a living hell or whatever, kicking them out usually isn't the answer. Dealing with them is. Communication really is key here. First thing you need to do is make sure all staff and management are on the same page, day in, day out. If a boarder asks for something, the answer is the same no matter whom they ask. Ask the needy boarder why they feel the way they do and what you can do to help them. Remember what I said in a previous video, the staff is the boarder's problem solver. Next, don't ever give them a reason to feel they need to micromanage. As I said earlier, there's usually a reason why they act the way they do. If a boarder asks for the moon and back, be upfront with what you can and what you can't do for them. Next thing when dealing with a needy boarder, keep professional. Needy boarders with a chip on their shoulder are going to do everything they can to get you to lose your composure. I haven't called an asshole, I haven't asked to fight. Yeah, those people are a lot of fun, but they do appear. Best thing to do, stay cool no matter how much mud they're throwing your way. As I've said before, all boarders are treated equally. If they are not treated equally, then things start to go off the rails. And the final thing I'm going to tell you, do not, do not try to fight fire with fire. It's just not going to work. Try to understand why they feel the need to micromanage in the first place. If all you can say is, well, that's just the way it is, sorry, and just walk away after that, it's going to turn into drama city. As I said, remember what I said in my boarding video. People who say, well, if you don't like it, there's the door. You're going to run out of people with that mindset and your business is going down the drain. Instead, treat your business as just that, a business. And that's pretty much everything I've got for you today. There are going to be needy boarders no matter where you go. Pick one out, somebody else will fill that spot. So the best things you can do are keep consistent, everybody's treated fairly, and it's up to you as the barn owner and staff is to figure out why they'd want to be needy in the first place. Patience is key, and as we know, very few people have it. Bam, look at that. Clothing changes again. I'm like, you know, a quick changer. Now onto the contest we have. For more information on how to win a copy of the Horse Trainers Glossary, there's a video right up there. I'll link it down below just for you guys. But to make it short and sweet, here's what you gotta do. First, you gotta be subscribed. Subscribe to the channel. Second thing, you gotta like this video. Third thing, down in the comments below, you're gonna tell me somebody who means a lot to you in the horse industry. Somebody who is pretty much your hero. Winner will be chosen June 8th, so keep your eyes out, guys. And now it's on to you. What are your thoughts on today's video? How do you deal with the needy border? Let me know down below. And while you're at it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. As I've said how many times before, it's a little thing, but it really does go a long way. And while you're at it, why not hit the subscribe button and become a part of the Little Cruiser Guild yourself. We have new videos up every week for your entertainment, but also to make this horse world make a bit more sense. And that's pretty much everything I've got for you guys today. All right, thank you so much for watching. I am Nolan Michael Cruz, and I'll talk to you later. Ciao!